What's up YouTube? This is Ben from Red Tech, and today we're in video number five of our PC building series and we'll be talking about GPUs. <music> GPUs in the last few years have come a long way both in their size and the power that they output. A few years ago, GPUs used to be this small but now they're much bigger and thicker. This is a GTX 1070, so it's still a generation old. The newer generation can be even thicker than this one. In a PC, GPUs handle your graphics, hence the name Graphics Processing Unit. They plug in with the gold strip on the bottom into one of the PCIe slots on your motherboard. Typically, newer motherboards will have a strengthened metal frame around the PCIe slot because of how heavy the GPUs have been getting recently. When a GPU sits in one of these slots, the amount of weight can start pulling down on the slot, sometimes ruining the connection between the slot and the motherboard itself. As with CPUs, GPUs have two main competitors. You have Nvidia and you have AMD. These two companies produce the chip itself inside of each of these units. These chips are then sold to other companies like Gigabyte to make the rest of the unit. Nvidia also makes their own cards, which will typically be released before all these other companies. On the back of a GPU, this is where you'll be plugging in your displays. VGA isn't a connection that's really supported anymore, and DVI is being pushed out slowly. Most newer GPUs will usually support HDMI and DisplayPort. Sometimes they'll include DVI as well. You'll often find more DisplayPort than HDMI on the back of these, and that's because DisplayPort can handle higher resolution at higher frame rates than HDMI. On the front of the GPUs, you'll usually see these two connectors, and these are used to connect two GPUs to work in tandem. You can buy these little connectors that'll clip between these two GPUs. However, newer GPUs can handle these heavy loads without having to share the load between two different GPUs. As with CPUs, the main difference between AMD and Nvidia is typically the price. Just like AMD is known for cheaper CPUs, AMD is also known to be the budget-friendly GPU manufacturer. Though some people say that it's because AMD is missing some of the features that Nvidia provides in their GPUs. As with CPUs as well, the GPUs follow a very similar naming structure. Nvidia has the GTX line, and the new series is the RTX lineup. The numbers afterwards are just like CPUs, where the first hundreds or thousands digit will display the generation of the GPU. For example, a 700 series will be the seventh generation, the 1000 number means that it's the 10th generation. Instead of being 1100, the RTX line now has the 2000s digits. The numbers after this in the 10s digits will identify the power or performance level. Typically, you'll find 50 being the lowest and 80 being the highest. You'll also find some suffixes, with TI being the superior version of the 80. After that, you also may see the word super, and that's an updated, slightly faster version of the non-super version. So here, Gigabyte is the brand that made this GPU, and then this is the GTX 1070. As with Nvidia and their GeForce line, AMD has their Radeon line, and they follow a similar naming structure as well. So, where Nvidia has their GTX and RTX line, AMD has different tiers. They have the R5, R7, R9, and the RX. They also have a Vega line. After this, they have the numbers. The first number, of the, or the hundreds number, shows the generation just like Nvidia. The second number, or the tens digit, just like Nvidia, shows the performance level from five to nine, just like Nvidia. The higher, the better. The last digit, or the ones digit, is only used when two GPUs share the same performance level. This number is usually zero or five. After these numbers, just like AMD's CPUs, there may be an X, which means that this is a faster version of a GPU. This isn't always the case with AMD though, because they've been known to switch up their naming scheme every now and then. Their new GPU, the Radeon RX 5700 XT, is being used as their first GPU to pioneer a new naming scheme which will be consistently used for the next 5-10 to 10 years. When you're buying a GPU, you'll want to look into how much it can handle. If you only plan on playing a few older, less powerful games, and doing some other non-stressful work with your computer, a lower tier AMD GPU will probably do you just fine. If you want the top of the line performance, with high end gaming, high resolution, high frame rate, and ray tracing as an added bonus, you'll want to look into the Nvidia RTX line. The RTX 2060, 70, and 80 GPUs are the first GPUs to handle real time ray tracing. This basically means that these GPUs can calculate how light bounces off of objects correctly as if they were in the real world. However, not many games yet have adopted this technology, but if some of the games that do support it are already on your list, then this is a good thing to look into for you. 
If you're going to be using things like Adobe products, like Premiere and After Effects, these softwares have been optimized to use NVIDIA's GPUs more so than AMD. If you haven't bought your monitor yet, I'll be talking about monitors in an upcoming video in this series, so you'll want to be tuned in for that. I'll be going through this then. Some monitors are sold with different technologies to support different GPUs. The NVIDIA version is called G-Sync and the AMD version is called FreeSync. These are basically the same but proprietary to each individual card. What these do is they let the monitor and the GPU talk between themselves to make sure that the monitor doesn't miss any frames, which will reduce screen tearing. I made the mistake of buying a FreeSync monitor to match up with my NVIDIA GeForce GPU. Personally, I haven't noticed much of a difference, but I'm not playing super high performance, high resolution games. One last thing to note with GPUs is that they're sold in different sizes. This 1070 is almost as big as they come. However, newer, more powerful GPUs can be thicker, but GPUs are also sold smaller. Sometimes you can find them as low as half of this size, which will fit some smaller cases much better than this one. So if you're going with a smaller case, a smaller GPU may be better for you. If you're an experienced PC builder and you're aiming to have a full custom water loop, then you may want to look into GPUs that aren't sold with massive heat sinks and fans. You can buy GPUs that have water blocks custom made for these GPUs to work with your loop. I don't personally have any experience with custom water cooling, but if there's enough interest, I may do a video on it later on. Speaking of cooling, that'll be one of the next videos in this series, so make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell to make sure you don't miss that video. Thanks for watching, make sure to like this video, follow me on Instagram, and comment down below what GPU you think is best for you and why. See you next time, peace.